Yo, it's me, Captain Gold, and you're watching the seventh episode of my month-long Project Zomboid Survival Guide series for beginners. In the previous episode, our protagonist Rebecca Salvatore faced the undead hordes of Phallus Lake in order to secure for herself plenty of valuable weapons and tools. After an incredible action-packed multi-day operation, Rebecca returned home victorious with the majority of Phallus Lake being cleared of the undead. That being said, if you haven't seen the previous episode, check it out before continuing on with this part. Also go ahead and check out the playlist I made for this very series and the other Zomboid content I've published on my channel. Anyways, without further ado, let's get this party started. Becca woke up on the 19th day to a light drizzle at home, somewhat exhausted from her multi-day excursion in Phallus Lake. She took some time to check her inventory and her supplies before it was time to go out and collect some wood. You see, the plan was to build a wall to keep her base hidden from the gaze of any wandering Zeeks in the open field next to the u store it. Now, a couple of episodes ago, I mentioned the importance of collecting pairs of rope. Here's why. I can now take four logs and wrap them up, thus making them easier to carry. Each log is going to give me three wooden planks when I saw them, and I'm gonna need a ton of planks to complete the privacy wall. Hence, this rope shit is gonna save me some time and make the process of moving logs from the woods far more efficient. Now we can put these stacks down and untie them. Then we can proceed to saw them, which will give us some XP points towards the carpentry skill. To build a wall, it's actually rather easy. First, make sure you have wood planks in your inventory or near you on the ground, and also make sure you have a hammer and plenty of nails. Then, right-click and select Wall Frame. Press the R key to rotate the wall frame and simply place it where you'd like. I decide to build a door frame here, as I'd like to have the option to get to the other side of this wall with little effort, just in case I need a quick escape route. Now, in order to add wall panels, simply right click the wall frame and click the highest level wall possible. Now it's time to go get some more wood and continue this process until the wall is completed, which, by the way, will require breaks from time to time. With the wall completed, and with some spare wood remaining, I decide to build yet another rain collector. I then build myself a door, which requires door hinges and a door knob. With that complete, I will now work on my next objective, which is to start a farm for long-term survival. So I grab a shovel and an empty sack, and I head out to the nearby woods to gather some dirt. Then I place the dirt down. Now I just gotta sow some seeds at some point. I then spend some time decorating the area with some useful furniture. As the sun was going down, I decided to dig some furrows with my pickaxe. Now the ground is ready to receive seeds. I decided to wait on planting crops as I wanna wait for a rainy day. That way, the rain will do all of the watering for me. With that said, I go ahead and get me some water from the sink in the lobby, and I chill at my base, dismantling some electronic devices. Then I listen to the emergency broadcast frequency before going to bed. Becca woke up the next day and quickly went to add gasoline to the car parked in the lot of the used store it. I wanted a spare vehicle, and since I had a key for this car, I decided to finally move it into my base. I then moved some metal shelves to the farm area of my base for further farming storage. I then took some mouse traps I had found from days ago and I placed them down in nearby units. I then added bait to these traps, being chocolate to be precise. Chocolate is one of the best forms of bait for mice and rats. Now, when I leave to find more non-perishable foods, these traps will yield me some free food via trapping. 
Now keep in mind, for any trap to work, you need to be 75 tiles away from said trap for at least one hour in game. Then I built another rain collector, which would be used exclusively for watering crops. After which I decided to sow some seeds into my dug farrows. To do this, simply have seeds in your inventory and plant them via the right click menu. Keep in mind that this is likely to change when build 42 comes out. I then cook me some food with my grill daddy. After that, I take my buckets filled with rainwater, which I totally forgot about, and I use them to water my crops instead of waiting for the rain to come. Watering crops is pretty easy, so just watch and learn. And just like that, we've completed yet another objective, being the act of starting myself a little farm for long-term survival. I then spend the rest of the day reorganizing shit and getting ready for some scavenging. I want to finish stocking up on non-perishable foods, as that will help me during the winter. Which is a few months away, by the way. The next day comes and I decide to take Becca into Riverside with the spare car we grabbed yesterday. I place some supplies into the back of the car just in case I need to change tires. But aside from that, we head out nice and early. First stop is the gas station to grab some fuel. And apparently the station is a bit busy with activity. Time to clear. Let me grab some drinks and snacks if there's any left in here. I also decide to dismantle this arcade machine for points in electrical. All right, time to head out. Let's pull into this bar here. And it's time to check out the cars here. This nice looking car is in great condition. I'm gonna take gas out of my old car and put it into this one. Then I'll transfer the loot in the trunk to the new car. And like that, I'll have a nice new ride to take home. Now I'm gonna check out these other cars over here. And there's nothing useful in them. Let's get inside this bar so that we can get our hands on some alcohol. Liquid Courage doesn't expire and it's packed with calories. Plus it can help me sleep if I can't for some reason. I then go on to check out the laundromat and I end up finding myself another mousetrap, which is kind of fucking nice. I then go to the nearby grocery store and grab myself some non-perishables. After that, I check out a van and then I check out another store. As my bags are getting full, I opt to leave this area so I can go visit the fishing store or bait shop. It's actually not too far from this area. I grab whatever will help me in the long run and then I head out. And maybe I'll grab those water barrels one day. But my carpentry level isn't high enough and I might break those valuable collectors. I then go to check out the car yard, or whatever this shit area is, to see what sort of cars are here. The step van is the only vehicle that really catches my eye. But regardless of that fact, the sun is starting to set, so I think it's time for us to go back home. I store my loot away and I collect the rats my traps have caught. That's right, I butchered these little fellas and I stick them into my fridge. And after organizing all my shit, I listen to the radio and head to bed. Becca woke up to some light rain again and I got her into her new hot ride and we headed out for some more scavenging. I'm not yet satisfied with my non-perishable stockpile. So I head to a nearby farm, which I've basically ignored this entire series. And to my delight, I find a fucking trailer on the road to the farmhouse. You can bet your sweet ass that I grab this bad boy immediately. These things hold a ton of weight for delicious jams and goodies. And to attach them to your vehicle, you just gotta hold the V key and press the plus sign. This is also how you tow other cars. And fun fact, there's no rope needed for this. After grabbing this little vehicle accessory, I loot this tiny garage or shed or whatever the fuck it is. After clearing the area of nearby Zeds, of course. And lucky me, I find some stuff like a crowbar and some fertilizer. I then went to the nearby farmhouses and I looted the fuck out of the first house and shed. Once I finished with this house, I opted to move on to the next. All right, let's get the hell out of here. We got some nice shit. I then return to my base, park the trailer here, and then I go on to unpack the goods I managed to collect. Before I went to bed, I checked up on my crops to make sure that they were healthy. I then went on to listen to the radio like clockwork. 
and I read a carpentry book before heading to bed. Becca woke up to a foggy day the next day, which was a pain in the ass. So I decided to eat food and then read some more. Because as you should know, I really don't like going out in the fog if I don't have to. Well, it looks like the power finally went out. Time to go turn on that generator. All right, back to reading as I don't want to do shit in the fog. Once the fog clears, I do some chores, change my clothing, and then I place some bait into the mouse traps, and then head out to go grab me some more supplies. I first head to the gas station for obvious reasons. I then head off to the nearby ghost town, which isn't too far from Riverside's outskirts. I'm hoping I could find a sledgehammer here. And you know what? I've actually found a sledgehammer in this construction site in previous playthroughs. But unfortunately, I wouldn't be as lucky this time around. I then grab an antique oven for the winter, which ought to be its own objective, but it really isn't that necessary. Man, this area is just so atmospheric. Honestly, it's a nice place to play if you like being secluded. That being said, I pull into one of the few completed houses here. I kill some Zeds and then I go on to loot the house, where there's some steel cages for trapping. I also grab even more non-perishable food, which now leads me to being satisfied with my stockpile. Hence, I've now fully completed my list of objectives. Time to add some more for the final episode. Be that as it may, I now have what I need to survive in the long run and to complete this month-long survival series. But we're literally not finished surviving the entire month, so you'll have to catch the conclusion to Becca's story in the next episode. Setting that aside, I leave this ghost town and head back to my base. As per usual, I have to organize my loot, which takes plenty of time. I then read a little bit while also listening to the radio. And just like that, Rebecca Salvatore heads to bed, thus concluding this episode. If you like this sort of content, please like, share, and subscribe. Also remember that you may opine anytime if you feel so inclined down in the comments section. I am Captain Gold, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye